it is truly the end of an era and it happened it seems like because some people went to puerto rico that's always tough but we haven't heard all the sides, which means it's time for Verbal Tab, the show that proves fighting way easier from outside of Puerto Rico, just because logistically to get to. I am your host, Kevin. With me, of course, Raph as far as a Raph, how are you doing this evening? Um, that's a violation of my HIPAA rights. To ask you how you're how you're doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> you millennials. <laughs> <laughs> so the question i'm I, sure yeah i heard a announcer refer to a 24 year old at the olympics as a millennial i was like i don't think that's accurate but okay <laughs> it just depends on who you're talking to and who understands the question because they go well this millennial and i go am i a millennial i don't think so or you're am i feeling pretty old to be anything don't know. Just feel super old all the time. Also, I'd like to update something. In the never-ending analysis of Space Jam 2, Kevin told me before the show that something didn't age well. What was that, Kevin? Before this show or before last before one? No, before we literally signed on to this one. You said something didn't age well. What was that? Hmm. I forgot already. It was Dame time. Didn't age oh, well. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I thought we were. I was in a different mode. Yeah, are we? Am I get allowed to start post poking Olympics? I was gonna wait for you. Go like, for we it. need to get to the events of this week. Like, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. It's the USA, so that's where my head was on waiting for that. <laughs> Damn it, you ruined my pun. It's fine. Or my entry. Yeah, Dame time has not aged well because he threw the ball <laughs> to France with a minute left and then missed every three he took. In addition to just one of the worst turnovers at the worst moments of the game. So, Dame Time not looking good in Tokyo. Here's some good news, though. It's the first time somebody has surrendered to France. (laughs) It was a robbery in the last minute and a half. I knew what happened and still had to watch the game Mm. because, and until the last two minutes, you're like, what are they talking about? Maybe Maybe I saw an article from The Onion. Maybe I missed it. And then you're like, nope, wait. France won this fucking game. The United States got outscored a lot to a little in the third quarter. It was like 16 to four. It's like, well, that's not good. That's a problem. (laughs) NBC's coverage of the actual event is just re-airing the Dream Team documentary. (laughs) That would be a 30 rock like move on their part. And it's a good idea. A smart one too. I would like to point this out. Kevin was talking about how the last space jam didn't actually go to space. They went to cyberspace. Just wanted to bring that up. It's been bugging me all week. Cyber space jam. You can call it that, but they did go. And if you still haven't visited the old school space jam website, everybody go to that. It is still in its 1996 glory of the geo cities website that it was from years ago. People All right, have Kevin? not been watching that movie the way I would have hoped. And I'm also finding they're neither <laughs> they're also not watching the Olympics. So I'm yes. like, do you see the women's rowing team fuck up Japan the other day? And people are like, What are you talking about? You sound insane. It's like Simone Biles doesn't look herself, hasn't since the trials. <laughs> I need to just talk to Casey Garcia for the next You three do. Weeks. And here's some sad news about that, Kevin, is that Kelly just really wanted to be over the Olympics and goes, ugh, the Olympics, can I just protest it? And I told her, no. And she goes, why? And I go, because I need TV to win. And I need people to watch TV in large masses because that's good for my business. And we have watched exactly zero (laughs) minutes of Olympic coverage, so I'm really not helping my own cause here. But I've been busy, and I will say that. And there were good fights this weekend. So let's transition to that. Kevin? Yeah, I watched 30 minutes of dressage, which is me fighting to stay awake. That was pretty good. It's (laughs) It's horse dancing. There was uh, the judo stuff still good, as is fencing. I watched the U.S. win its first gold in fencing. Shit's brutal. They have like a light-up mask. That would be helpful in jiu-jitsu for us. 
Didn't somebody in judo do super well from the United States? Yes. Uh, I actually I don't I know Taekwondo they won I didn't see exactly I don't remember the U.S. doing it in judo but I believe so all the same yeah it's been a lot because <laughs> it's you know beach volleyball started as, as six on six and I've been quite busy I even brunched today Raph that's not Ooh. the point are we going to talk fights first or Danaher first? Because we're five minutes in and it kind of feels like it's more our mood to gossip, but do you think the Dillashaw fight is worth edging in here? I mean, Elkins knocks some people out. Uh, Barber's back. People were writing that article before she even started. They were really glad she won when they got to hit enter on it. <laughs> um, Mickey wins. With a submission, there's some some good stuff to note, but the Danaher death squad has been put to pasture. Does it seem like the right time? For us to talk about it or for them to break up? Oh, no, for them to break up. I actually had a moment where I was thinking, what's Gary Tonin doing? Is he fighting again anytime soon? Have I missed it? I felt that way about a lot of them. So when they announced like the official breaking up of the team, it was like, well, yeah, right? Have you all been, what's going on? I mean, some people moved to Puerto Rico, the indifference. And if you haven't seen it, there's a Dana Herb post that's very sad and very long. Mm -hmm. And it has like a Gary sitting there all somber, but it's like location, team virtue values, opinions, you know, their own brands and careers have taken them in different directions. Like, okay. I'll tell you the first thing that went through my head, which is that for so many people in our community, this is their Beatles breaking up. Ouch. I don't know so the Beatles. I would think about who's chiming in in these comment sections. You guys meant so much to me. Oh. I got I got to let you guys know I did not know what honey hole was until I could call it the proper name. Now <laughs> I just I've changed as a person. You guys have changed me for the better. Now <clears throat> here's the thing. As a legacy, they're going to have a long long lasting sort of uh legacy in terms of their competitive success. What is interesting is if you really think about the length of time that they were in action and running things, it's not a super long time. So that's why I also compare it to the Beatles. Beatles also were around for 10 years. It feels like they had a, a million billion different records, but only really one per year. <clears throat> and many of those records still didn't get broken until the day. And that's what I think Gordon wants is to have that sort of a legacy. Feels the real like question is second wave of Meta Morris to me. Sure. You know, we had the Gracies. We fell out of love after <laughs> Metamorris. And it was like, we need a new first family. We started to like Eddie. Things got weird. <laughs> it was a good interim family. But then it was the Dan or her death squad we fell in love with for a really long time. But the question is, what does that mean? Because some of them are going to clearly train together still. And then are they going to go divide and conquer? Is this all bullshit? Is this – what is this? We don't know yet. So Well, they referenced Eddie, who's been out of the group for a little bit. Yeah. And that was a nice reference. That, that was nice of him to get his due on that one. I've seen a lot of like, man, real classy uh, comments on that. And yeah, I, I think it's really nice because he did help elevate the status of that crew. It is interesting though. Is Nicky Rod going to go back to – working on the Jersey shore now is there going to be some sort of thing that we see Ethan Krellenston showing you how to do pull-ups in the comfort of an LA fitness is Gary going to have to go back to working at hot dog on a stick. Cause I just really won't stand for that one. Kevin, maybe he can play his guitar on the shore. Oh boy. Things have gotten dark. <laughs> we'll have to ask. What if it is Gary's music career? That was the, 
the the problem. For the crew. I do want, there's so much more you want to be like, okay, if you all aren't going to do an official press conference, this is mm-hmm. complete bullshit. You've seen, right. we've all seen that the moment in Queen when they have to sit through the press conference about their career. <laughs> this is no different. You don't get to just escape our lives with a Facebook post. We've been curious what the H is going on since you moved to Puerto Rico. Bizarre flex. A little hard to get in and out of. Not quite as commutable for the entire team. (laughs) Never make an official announcement about what's changing or what's going on. We get a lot of crypticness, and now we don't even get to see it real world style. They're just going to skip to the press post after like it got canceled this sucks i'm really hoping gary will do something or explain where he's at is he still fighting do you, mm. do you think? Mm. Mm. not really sure can i put one thing out there though sure if there's a reunion show i think i should be the one to host it you should get dibs but you know right? they end up giving it to like someone that would infuriate you oh i know it'd be somebody from flow grappling I just know that I had some interviews with them that have done pretty well. And more importantly, I think I'm the right temperament for everybody to show up for a cash grab to just roast each and every one of them for why they're coming back for more money to just look at old clips. I also like the idea of they're all drilling leg locks, drilling leg locks, drilling leg locks, (laughs) and then... Gary's like, what if, you know, we we just tried collar chokes with the gi and <laughs> there's like a record scratch and Nikki Rod like passes out. John Danaher's like just staring at Gary angrily. And then Ethan Carlson's like, you know, I don't think that's such a bad idea. Maybe we should look into it. And Gordon's like, I won't even stand for it. And before you know it, they're all like staring at each other. It's like, I guess things have changed. That was actually it. <laughs> it's probably the entire aspect of it. What does this mean, though, Kevin? Does this mean that the Daisy Fresh kids are going to be the ones to come in? Is Autos finally going to see their day of not having a rival? I was going to say, isn't Andre Galval the big mm-hmm. winner now of all of this? And in the end, it was probably like Gordon refuses to get vaccinated or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just struggling. Or one of them did get vaccinated. It's like, we don't even know each other. (laughs) I do think this is uh, Atos reigns supreme. Now back at the top, a huge moment for 10th Planet. I think they can sneak back into some major wins with the right fighter class. And check, Matt, get your your polished um, same rash cards off. It's your moment. Mm Mm-hmm. If you guys have memorabilia, I think this is the time to store it, put it away. Um, But again, we don't know what this means. I'm hard-pressed to believe that Gordon will not show up at his next super fight whenever his tum-tum is okay and not have Danaher there. That seems to be what we've been alluded to. I'm hard-pressed to think that Gary won't fight with Danaher in his corner. Everything else may be on the table. Maybe, you know, Craig just became somebody who got a green card. So maybe he's going back to Australia. Maybe that's what's going to happen. I don't know, but it just seems odd. And I think they said stuff is still coming. And I think a lot of people in the comment section were saying, see you in Austin. So I don't know if that's what the result is. But, Kevin, when I read that they were going to break up, it did tell me one thing. And do you know what that one thing was? What's that? Years ago, I believe, or did quit the Danaher Death Squad. I famously said, the only thing that can defeat the Danaher Death Squad is probably the Danaher Death Squad. And lo and behold, facts. You're I would record. go look up that clip, but I also don't want to. It exists. Go listen to it. In fact, I won't tell you which episode I said it on so that you have to listen to the whole goddamn library. But I tell you this, I did say it. All right. 
<laughs> it's the best tease to tell people to download the whole thing. It's well, it's an okay. <laughs> people will argue about its efficacy in podcast um, s- laboratories sure. all around the world. I am really profoundly more upset than I thought I would be, both at the fact that it just broke up and that I don't know why. But what a shot for Onyx and the Wright brothers, you know? Yeah. Now's our time. Somebody's got to fill in the gap. Yes, that is my Long Island iced tea. I'm drip, drip, <laughs> drinking. We should probably get to some fights because we don't even know. Poor Nikki Ryan's not even allowed to do jujitsu anymore. We're trying to get our bearings. <laughs> People said it was a really fun night of fights, Raf. I agree, but I was quite busy, you know, trying to see if the men's polo team was also going to recreate. And have you ever really watched archery? Not really. Like, what is the appeal of that? Really? Is that the curling for this year, then? A little bit. That and air rifling. Air rifling, I'm not sure, should be a sport. And the tapestry of rowing will really intoxicate the soul. Hmm. Interesting. Well, did TJ, TJ Dillashaw, did he win the fight? I don't know. I, I have to watch it again. I feel like my first impression was maybe in a very close decision. I can kind of see how they did it just in terms of some control. But... Sanhagen really fucked him up, man. Like, that was a great fight. And that cut that happened really early in the fight had me concerned. And TJ was showing grit. And I get that, yeah, it was a great fight. But people felt very strongly about it. And I think they looked at the compu strikes. And it's not to say that that's wrong. But I just saw TJ Dillashaw. And I will say, there there was a lot of good grit and wherewithal in terms of fuck dude you might be losing this fight so yeah obviously a lot of character there in that but fuck it was close i think what do you think i have my overwhelming judge at the end of the five rounds because i don't know there were some moments where TJ obviously had some really good positions over sanhagen but sanhagen just in just did more damage and at the end of the fight, I admittedly would suck at the round by round judgments because it really doesn't make any sense to me. I much prefer the pride rules. I think I'm getting that right. Rev's like, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at them at the end of it and TJ Dillashaw looks messed up. He looks yeah. beaten down. And Sanhagen looks... Kind of good to go one round more. And maybe that's just people with a mustache. They have a certain arrogance. He just looked okay. So at the end of it, I left feeling the way I had felt at the end of round two, three, four. Yeah, TJ is fighting, but Sanhagen looks more in control of this fight. It was a split decision. So it was extremely, extremely close. 48, 47, 47, 48, 47, 48. You know, one judge flips and things go the opposite. So yeah. as close a fight as it gets, but thank God blood left on the mat wasn't a metric. Yeah. I was uh, I was out covering uh, some kickboxing yesterday, and it's one of the first things I've covered live in person, and I was shooting it, and it was fun. I, I really liked going. Credit to the guys over from Mama Academy. I'm still not comfortable saying it like that. Uh, but it's Milton's uh, Academy. And if you guys are out here in Woodland Hills, highly encourage you to go doing it. Um, great stuff there. But I got word from people that these were firefights, like the whole main card. So by the time I got home, I started watching some of them, loved the main event, thought it was great. But the rest of the the main event card, Kev, it was really, really solid. And I actually think Man, it's tough. It, it's one of those ones where I know the main event's going to be fire, but the actual like co-main event was also phenomenal. So if I can implore you guys to go see that one, um, I would say 100% 
look into that main card because I was not disappointed. And I have to say, credit to my friends who said it was a really good one because, you know, sometimes you're a little skeptical and you go, are you really doing this? Or do you guys get just like drunk or something? Um, yeah, it was Kyler Phillips versus Riley and Pava. Great fight. Uh, Darren Elkins coming back with a savage return win over Derek Miner. Uh, Derek Minner is actually a friend of the show, so I was really stoked to see that. I do want to point one thing out, which is that Macy Barber had a very close fight with Miranda Maverick to the point where DC, after interviewing Macy, comes back to the interview deck or comes back to the, the commentary deck and says, you know, I got to be truthful. I didn't think she won that fight. Meanwhile, the camera is covering Macy Barber seeing her family for the first time in a while. And he goes, yeah, and there's she's seeing her family right here. And that's a nice moment. But like if she goes back and watches that fight, she did not win that fight. So <laughs> just think this is the wrong time to do any of this. And more importantly, <laughs> if the story happening on the screen is, oh, what a great moment. What a great thing to ruin it with is to say, but let's be honest, she didn't win that fight. Adorable hugs being given to everybody, but uh, you didn't win. It is kind of funny when he doubles down with, now's the time to be honest. Now's the time I have to explain my position aggressively. <laughs> this is her looking at her family, and that's sweet, but fucking terrible fight. It was weird, but, um, but she won. and Adrian, so, oh, off, oh, it, <laughs> Adrian Yanez and Randy Costa was also very good. So them, some good fights for you kids to watch. Should you want to do that sort of a thing? And I got to tell you, I know that I'm usually on my money on things and I want to give credit, uh, William Pava and Kyler Phillips actually was the fight of the night over TJ Dillashaw and Corey Sanhagen. So that just goes to show you, even though people were talking about that main event, they still acknowledge that co-main event that I liked as the fight of the night. Adrian Yanez and Darren Elkins both got performances of the night and they should. And Adrian Yanez, um, this is complicated because he beat a friend of mine in a fight. And it's always like, do I still harbor bad feelings for you? No. Or do I? Should I? No. Maybe. He was getting pieced up in that first round, comes back in the second round, and he's got heavy hands, man. Jeez. And uh it was it was phenomenal, dude. So kudos to him. I think I'm on board. I think I've been trying to be on board, but every once in a while they do show the clip of my friend getting knocked out. Not a fan, but also a fan. I'm just being honest. It's difficult to know people in this sport sometimes. But man, is he really good? And you can see his knockout power. And even then, when they were interviewing him and they said, Tell us a little bit about that fight, he's like, Man, I just I didn't do it right that first round. I got it all wrong. I uh, should have been better. And I was like, Yeah, I mean, I kind of see that. I mean, you got pieced up, but you still got power in those hands, dude. So um, good for you. And I like that when they were talking about Randy Costa, they go, Well, he's getting to the second round. We normally don't see him in those. Let's see how he does. Oh, he didn't win. He's bad at second round. <laughs> Just like, what a terrible thing to have as a form of analysis. It's like Kevin doesn't like Tuesdays. Uh oh, here comes another one. Even worse, I it's I, we did a Tuesday show. Kevin really lost his joke edge on Tuesdays. Let's just avoid Tuesdays. <laughs> Let's just make that the wrap on him. We don't do Tuesdays. Not good for him. That's happened to me before. I'm well, sorry. Okay, did you see the Mickey Gall fight? How was Mickey? Mickey was good. Um, first round, rear naked choke, looked pretty pretty slick. It's always fun to see all the people who train with him because I swear to God, it's like I don't see or hear from him at all for months on a time on his social media or whatever. And then when he wins, it's like every jujitsu person that like has a photo goes, Jujitsu, he we did it. And I go, wait, did we? You guys train with him? That's dope. Okay, I didn't know that. Good for you guys. Um, so that was pretty good. And it's the rare submission uh of the evening. So all things considered, pretty good there. I will at some point probably peruse the prelims 
Um, so my apologies on not knowing more on that one, but y'all, it was a packed weekend. I got to see people cheer and yell and it was weird because I forgot what it was like. Kevin, at one point I literally had the camera in my hand when I was uh, photographing at this event and I asked somebody, I go, does this, do I point this at them or at me? How does this camera work? And they're like, how long has it been? I'm like, honestly, I haven't shot anything sports wise in 18 months. Is it 18? Somewhere in there. I could also, the more die thing, I could see you just getting kicked. Being like, who the fuck did that? Who kicked me? Can I be (laughs) very blunt with you? The The worst moment that could have happened. It didn't, thankfully. But when the big boys go, they have power. And one thing about this kickboxing event is it's meant for amateurs. So they really want to see more than knockouts. They're, they don't want you to knock people out. They want you to show a technical precision to your work. So they want you to show that you are technically good at this. So when people start to get a little aggro, they have a person on a microphone saying let's take that down let's take that down come on guys let's work more on combos throw those combinations we want to see technique but for whatever reason when they get to the big boys they just go yeah whatever yeah do what you want because who's gonna stop them and i realized oh shit they haven't eaten all day either that's not good no wonder they let them go in this particular case one of my homies Another Kevin Ooh. is in the heavy division. And My man. he was he was like in the process of fighting somebody. These two very nice people were reserving seats for me so that I could do some photos. And I was very pleased because it was really hard to shoot this event. There were very weird angles. And this lovely woman and her husband were like, we'll put our purse down here. Much appreciation to them. I will shout their names out in a moment. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is, as Kevin was like in the process of blocking a kick, he's backing up. And there's like a small railing that is the protection for us. But again, bigger guys where I looked at them and I shot them a look (laughs) as I put up my hand and I go, I would normally not do this, but I know him. And if he falls on me, I'm fighting him. (laughs) And uh, fortunately, we did not have him fall on us. But it was a concern because, again, there's only a certain size limit of people who can fall on me. If you are 155 and above and you fall on me, not friends anymore. It's pretty simple. I, I'm going to steal that. I'm sorry. I was just reflecting. I was like, wait, what's my weight? Yeah, I think it's 145, 150. <laughs> <laughs> do you think though that if somebody was like 170 you might give them a little bit of a free pass because I've thought about that no no, no. wait are they okay. cushy like 170 no. 170 folks are not usually what one would call cushy okay then yeah then yeah okay okay I just I wonder that because you know I try to be nice but yeah everybody was lovely it was Good to see people fighting um, and yelling and bickering and all that sort of stuff. And all in all, great sportsmanship and and seeing some of our, our guys do very well. And that was super dope to see. What I would tell you, though, is the amount of screaming is it, it is an adjustment. I did bring headphones and I was going to put them on, but eh, I just didn't. And uh, there was a lot of killed him and let's go, which was very hard to juxtapose that with let's go ahead and bring that down. Let's work some combos that was being yelled <laughs> at on the PA system. So when you hear somebody in the crowd being like, kill him, but let's also work those, uh, those good technical skills. Everybody. I was like, it's like NPR was fighting with the heavy metal channel and somewhere in between, I was just sitting there going like, guys, seriously, guys. everybody chill. You shut up, kick him harder. You shut up. Let him bang. Uh, but we did have a couple people who were like, let him fucking fight. <laughs> 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 it 
So that's how you know uh, combat sports are back. I do also want to give a shout out because uh, there's an interview I just did with the uh, owner of Fighters Rep that will go up on the Grappling Hour page later this week. It is returning to SoCal on August 13th. I'm very excited for that, Kevin. And uh, we have some friends fighting on that one, including Terry Ware, former guest of the show, is uh, going to be in the main event on the main card. So very stoked for him. And there's a handful of other friends who are on the show, but it's just kind of dope to see that those things are, are in existence. And again, and just getting a little taste of it was kind of normal. Um, we hope to do more photos, hopefully if the world is a little more sane. So, you know, make smart decisions, everybody. Yeah, I we, missed it. We're not even going to remotely get into that. <laughs> we don't know. To... <laughs> it's just, it's very sad. You can't uncork that. Like we've, pop the top off the united states i think they've mm. we've really proven over the last few years we don't have two gears let alone three let alone like a comprehension to be like maybe we should put it in reverse i'm pretty <laughs> nervous rap pretty nervous dude we were just talking about this this week that was like a year ago we go we have no way to fight this we're all fucking just stuck where we are we got a vaccine mm, i have feelings about that <laughs> it's just like oh God. Okay. Well, your feelings are valid. I'm sure whatever they are. Oh, no. No, you said the magic words. Not valid. Okay. I would tell you this, though, Kevin. It is good to see you training. Are you feeling it? Are you enjoying it? I am. I have already confided in you. I've had to, Mm -hmm. like, have the you need to chill conversation. (laughs) (laughs) The head instructor is like, hey. It's like oh, it's You like, would have been uh, the person that on the PA system this weekend. They would have been like, "All right, you Kevin, guys need to relax. So let's relax. Let's use our sweeps. Let's He's use thinking with his <laughs> testosterone, not with his <laughs> headosterone." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna. You know what? That's a genius idea. I'm gonna bring a PA loudspeaker the next time you're rolling and just narrate the whole time. Kevin, Kevin, let's bring it down. Calm down. Okay. Calm down, calm we, down. Let's calm it down. me. Well, don't mm-hmm. calm down that much. Calm <laughs> less down. Calm up more. Calm up. Up, calm. <laughs> the worst part is, I think this is something they regularly do in this format to make sure that people don't really get hurt. So I'm not making fun of that. I am making fun of the reality of you hearing that all day, and yet some of these guys who are giving the look of, just let me bang, bro. Come on, man. Let me bang. But I would say it is wonderful to see it. Where are you training again? Because the people, they need to know it. They need to know where to go, Kevin. Well, I will take one moment to simply (laughs) lament. I was fully cognizant that I missed it. I was... Not as you, it's hard to be prepared for the mental changes that happen just a month and a half into training. I, I have given it the full month, five, six weeks now before we've, we've really been, <laughs> we've mentioned that I've visited class. It's like, no, no, no. Now it's like two to three times a week. We're getting in it. We're starting to do it. And it is mentally quite a difference maker for me. So the collection, the calmness, and just the life fulfillment it gives me is very important i am training at onyx jiu-jitsu out here in aurora colorado isaiah wright's gym he is running it with his wife and his brother they are awesome xavier jesse come roll there's tons of classes there's a lot of good and frankly my favorite a lot of good nogi opportunity ralph which remains i think uh you know if you're just paying attention a little bit more more popular maybe than the traditional gi stuff especially for people on the go i could go on about no gi but i won't is that the case though now that danaher has retired his squad that's a good question i will have to check if it's like Mm -hmm. the day that no gi died and we'll just (laughs) got me singing and then that's great (laughs) we'll all find out this week I am elated to be back, and that's it. I'm relearning everything. I forgot arm drags until like six minutes into a round Friday night. I was like, oh, shit. 
This leg's really annoying me. I'm going to start leg dragging this way. Ah, boat. Got it. So that part's pretty fun. Good for you. And shout out to my friend, Michael Frosto, who has his academy. I know we talked a little bit about Milton's place. Mama. You guys can go train there. It's great. But if you're in Sherman Oaks, go over to my good friend, Michael Frosto. New ground jujitsu. They have so much training. And just found out. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. But I'm going to say it anyway. We're going to have a kids program. It's going to be great. But adult jujitsu going on right now. I got a text from him that was like, so are we going to see you this morning? And I was like, oh, fuck. I'm so tired. So much. So many photos. Yeah, I'll see you guys. I literally pop in. We have a nice leisurely like chat amongst ourselves. There's only like three people like right at the start of the day. And then lo and behold, the whole jiu-jitsu community woke up at one time. And then like 20 minutes later, they all like burst through the door. And we all looked at each other like, oh, it's going to be a nice and light day. Oh, God, no, we got to go hard. This person's here. Damn it. Uh, So I got to tell you, even when days I am very tired, it is so good to see so many people coming out and supporting Michael Frosto. Again, new ground jiu-jitsu. Sherman Oaks, California. Look it up on the website and soon coming with the kids program. We've Kev, trained, we've trained at a lot of gyms, Raph. We really have at this point. I think somebody asked me when they met me for the first time. <laughs> I will tell you the dumbest thing I said first before I, I reveal this. But uh, some guy was saying, as we were talking about cameras and, and photography, he was like, yeah, yeah, what's your name, man? I was like, my name's Raph. Um, you know, uh, here's my card. I go, but you can actually follow me on Instagram at verbal tap cast. And he goes, I've heard of that. And Kevin, in a true moment of Raph arrogance, I like, I didn't miss a beat. And I just said, you should have. And I thought about it after and I was like, I do not know this person, but to do that kind of a joke is a specialized, excuse me, you don't know who I am. <laughs> But at this point, I was like, you know what? What I mean by this is obviously we've been around for so goddamn long. We've been to so many gyms. We should know probably everybody at this point, at least in Southern California, parts of Washington and parts of Denver. But by the end of it, I was like, please come. We would love to have you come train with us. Um, but yeah, dude, it's we train a lot of gyms. We've been very fortunate to be brought into so many different places and it's not stopping anytime soon. And now that Kevin knows what an arm drag again is, look out. Sky's the limit. <laughs> and I might even be able to join the skateboarding team at the Olympics. <laughs> Last Olympics reference, I swear. Raf, I think that'll do it for us tonight. I think so, too. Hey, I'm Kevin. Thanks for listening. Good night. And good fight. Go U- USA. USA, USA, USA. USA. Wait, wait, are we going to win? <laughs> Kevin, are no, we not going to win? Good. I'm not prepared for that. The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Please note, the new number is...